much. Um, well, first, I would like to thank the two co-chairs, um, Her Excellency Tin van der Straten and Her Excellency Jennifer Granholm for, uh, well, organizing this gathering and organizing, uh, making sure that uh, the voices, I think, of uh, emerging countries, emerging markets and African markets are being heard. So I think... Um, Ladies and gentlemen, I would like to first uh, take us back to Glasgow, to where we were standing in Glasgow. And I think we all agree that it ended with, depending on who you talk to, with the memorable agreement, regardless, right? Uh, and maybe more importantly, in light of the geopolitical dislocation that we are witnessing, that we have been witnessing in the last month, I think Glasgow ended with more solidarity uh, with the countries most affected by climate change. So six years after Paris, uh, we agreed that global greenhouse gas emissions must be reduced by 45% during this decade. Six years after Paris, we agreed on the rules of implementation of uh, updating every five years the nationally determined contributions uh, and Morocco has been quite progressive in its NDC. That's why I insist on that. Um, and six years after Paris, we agreed to finally mobilize climate finance um, we, by signif significantly increasing support to developing countries beyond the $100 billion per year that we have been discussing. So at COP26, Morocco has agreed has adhered to most of the declarations and initiatives, including the Power in Past Coal uh, Alliance uh, initiative. But I think, ladies and gentlemen, I think it's, uh, for us, Power in Past Coal cannot be done without access to um, sustainable gas and without access to further regional solidarity and let me let me let me tell you why i'm raising this point because more interestingly it was in glasgow early november that morocco my country managed to agree on just the reverse flow of uh, of, a, of a couple of pipelines that solution that has been implemented in eastern europe a couple of years ago uh we will be able to use the regasification the spare regasification capacity in some of our allies in Europe, in neighbor, neighboring fr friendly countries. So I think in Glasgow, from our perspective, global energy and climate governance um, really dependent on those bilateral alliances and uh, discussions and agreements with like-minded partners, public and private partners, by the way, uh, so for Africa, I think an inclusive and just energy transition means increasing, of course, the share of green electricity in a mix, promote decentralized production and digitalization of energy services, improve household purchasing power, and we cannot do that, again, without a wider cooperation with like-minded uh, allies. So I, I would, don't want to give you a lot of details on, on, how, on Morocco's achievement over the last decade or so, I, I just want to uh, really focus on the future. And uh, with our expertise, for example, in rural ele electrification, uh, we've been uh, working a lot under the radar, but working a lot in, in Africa, as you know. And uh, through our Moroccan Agency for Sustainable uh, Energy, Mazen, within the framework of South-South uh, cooperation, we have been engaged in, for example, the Coalition for Energy for Access to Energy that was launched la jointly with Ethiopia, uh, which was really focusing on access to energy, especially for African countries. And of course, the Desert to Power initiative that was mentioned by uh, Secretary Granholm, uh, which aims to provide